Hello, this is the Trade Site Stocks and Futures Market Preview and U.S. Economic Data Roadmap for the week beginning Monday, August 26, and ending Friday, August 30th, 2013. Let's take a look at some of the indices, then we'll look at the action from this last week. We'll look at a couple of the key stocks that we trade to see if they made any progress. Talk about the general environment, and then we'll look at the economic data coming out this next week. Try to figure out what the focal point will be for the market. So let's look first here at the S&P daily chart. This is, of course, the broad market index. You can see the trend line we were along since last November. Broke it in June. We talk about this every weekend. Came back up to retest. Ran it to the upside without getting back through. Finally rolled over. Never got a 13 sell signal, but we have rolled. Kind of had a very flat week, though. Uh, it has been August, evidently. Not getting the positive August that we typically get, although there have been some trades that have run very, very nicely. Uh, when, when the bigger uh, players haven't been around to squash them. So uh, it's been okay, but certainly uh, some very light volume days this week. I think it was one, of, we'll look in a minute at the volume, one of the lightest volume weeks of the year, I'm sure, um, much lighter than I was expecting. And frankly, volume was up on Friday, but most of that was because of Microsoft, which uh, traded about 200 million shares, and that's way over its 30 million. So the volume number was boosted by about 170 million by Microsoft. Here's the NASDAQ 100, the 13 sell signal back at the beginning of August has been the top so far. We're still operating uh, under that uh, parameter. Here's a look at the uh, semiconductor index, which has been very flat this week, very, very flat this week. And here's the uh, biotech index. Not much going on there. Uh, we'll also look closely at uh, oil, see where we're at. And again, still in that summer hurricane season, notice that we... Uh, Got a 13 sell signal today on oil. Keep in mind, this is the daily chart of oil. Hasn't had a sell signal all year, so this is it. Pretty interesting. Now, that doesn't mean we have to head down straight from here, but there's a 13 seeker sell signal on oil right now, and they got a risk line up here that's going to reflect. So the highs are the risk level. The highs of this move. You can trade all up in here for another couple of days, but uh, seeker sell signal now in effect on oil, and take a quick look also at gold. Did break that. Uh, Static trend line here, heading back up. Uh, Apple didn't do much, kind of a flat session. By the way, remember that on Thursday we had, uh, we're had we missing about three hours of data because the market was closed for a glitch for three hours on uh, on Thursday. Uh, Apple's kind of amusing to look at. Let me show you. I'm going to slide over here this 30-minute chart of Apple just so you can see for a minute. Uh, you know, two weeks ago we had kind of a run-up, and, uh, and then look at this. Look how flat it's really been since it hit this 500 area. Uh, straight across, got a 13 sell signal on the 30 minute chart. Used that for a while, finally broke it, ran up, rolled right back over within the day, and dead flat again. Uh, dead flat for four or five days on Apple, one of the narrowest ranges I can recall on Apple uh, in a very, very long time. Uh, here's Google, on the other hand, a little more action during this week. Uh, didn't really make much headway, but was up a little bit right off of that nine bar. Setup phase, you can watch the static trend line uh, up around 900. Uh, Amazon, uh, you know, a little bit of a bounce here, but again, a fairly flat week on Amazon and Netflix. Uh, new, new, highs, new highs on Friday, but there is a 13 sell signal in effect. You can see the pink risk line. Uh, we're coming up towards that. And finally, Tesla, new highs uh, for the weekend. The Tesla was a fun ride for us. We had uh, a nice winner on that this week. And if I bring the 30-minute chart over here, you can see this real nice cup from handle formation. This was the breakout that we took on Thursday right here over the 150-50 area that ran so nicely. Uh, so that's a look at all the indices uh, you know, and the key charts in the market. Uh, here's a look at uh, the NASDAQ 100 futures, 10-minute bars for the week. And just to show you what the ranges of the week were, Here's Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday, a little bit of last Friday. So we did gain, you know, 60 points here on the NASDAQ for the week, but most of it, you know, Monday gap up, eventually filled. Tuesday, fairly flat opening, came back a bit. Wednesday gap down, craziness on the release of the Fed minutes, all the way up and all the way back down, covered the range of the week at that point, which was pretty narrow. Thursday gap up, hold flat. Remember the market was closed for three hours there. Friday gap up on the Microsoft news and hold flat. And that's the only day that... Kind of leaves it behind, but you know the problem here is that even though you gained 60 for the week, uh, you gained 20 of it right here, 15 of it at least, almost 20 of it on this gap on Thursday, and then another piece on the gap on Friday. So in terms of actual trading uh, for that net gain, not so much. In the ES, the S&P uh, E-mini futures. 
even worse, really. Um, about it, most of the bulk of the trading is in about an 18 point range, average daily range on the ES 16 points. So that's not tremendous. We really have been doing very little in the futures market uh, because of this stuff. It just has not been exciting. Now, what do we focus on on the week ahead? A couple of things. First of all, uh, number one point is that this next Friday is the end of the month. As you know, last couple of days of the month can always be slow, not necessarily as slow as the end of a quarter. But at the same time, this is a summer week, still in the summer. A lot of places still not back to school. A lot of people still on vacation. That's why volume has been light. I'm going to go back to the volume thing in a minute. Uh, so Friday going to be very light, end of, end of month and a summer in August. In addition, next weekend is Labor Day weekend. We have the following Monday off. The stocks are closed. So people heading out Friday early anyways. So Friday is really going to be dead most likely. Thursday probably start to lighten up as people start to head out the door. Um, Mondays have been slow. They're typically slow in the summer. They're typically slower all year round, but even slower in the summer. Tuesday, Wednesday be the better trading days, we hope. Ironically, last week volume dropped Tuesday and then Wednesday from Monday, which was something I really was not expecting. Uh, and then we had this weird glitch on Thursday. So it almost felt like somebody knew, but we won't get into that right now. Uh, data for this week, Monday, durable orders, no big deal. Tuesday, Case Shiller, 20 City Index and Consumer Confidence. Consumer Confidence can move the market. It's 30 minutes in. Wednesday, pending home sales, crude oil uh, inventories. Thursday, initial and continuing jobless claims. The second look at GDP, usually not a big deal. Natty gas numbers at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Friday, personal income and spending, PC prices. Chicago PMI can be important. Second look at Michigan sentiment data. So again, if there's a focal point this week, I don't know from a data perspective, consumer confidence maybe uh, on Tuesday, but if there's just a general uh, concept of what we should be aware of, uh, I think it's it's more than likely uh, the fact that we are heading into Labor Day weekend and the month end and they're the same, uh, the same number. So now I wanted to show you a look, take a look here at NASDAQ volume. And let me get one thing off the chart here um, before we do that. Uh, there you go. So NASDAQ volume, and you can see how low we have this move down here. As a matter of fact, let me add for you really quickly uh, a, a moving average because when you do this and you apply it, usually a, there we go, 10 day moving average, the charts, okay? This gives us an idea of the sort of the, what the ebb and flow of volume is, not any one particular day. Uh, but just the general ebb and flow. And we don't like to see the average really be under 1.5 million shares. And it definitely is here. Matter of fact, we are at the lowest 10 day average of volume of the year right now. Look at that. Um, right in the beginning of January is low. Keep in mind that includes the last week of 2012. And that's a holiday week kind of between Christmas and New Year's. So that average gets brought down there starting the year and, and, and the, the chunk right there uh, between New Year's and Christmas. So that is a low point. And then we bounced. Okay, and uh, you know, kind of weekend again in April as the sequester kicked in, then we bounced, got a little bounce. We were actually looking good here in June, heading up. The average is getting back up near, uh, almost near 2 million, you know, with a couple of strong days up there, two of the best days of the year volume-wise, another couple of solid days. You know, 4th of July, that doesn't count. That's a, there's a holiday in there and a, a Friday wedged in between. That was where that happened. Um, but here we are in August and we are drooping. Uh, we are going under 1.4. A billion shares on a 10-day average so that is really poor and by the way if I go back to last year just so you can see yes August did kind of roll over in volume you know but it came into the month with an average of up near 1.8 and by the way this is still horrible compared to the uh, the, the uh, usual type of volume we see for the markets even in August and yes we did dip under 1.4 at the very end of August a little bit okay so this is the low of the year we're looking at right now dipping under 1.4 kind of looks like last year, but last year sure didn't feel quite as bad as this. Let's go back one more year just so you can have a look at volume where August was actually huge. The volume, the 10 day average actually got to three, uh, three trillion, no, three trillion dollars in shares a day. Uh, let's also flip this to a weekly chart just because I want to show you that the, uh, this particular week closed out basically at the lowest volume uh, of the year. So it was pretty poor. It is what it is. Can't make it be anything different than it is. We had some really nice trades this week anyways in the stock market in particular. So I'll take it and we'll be looking to call it, uh, especially Tuesday and Wednesday in the lab this week. But Monday and Thursday can be, eh, we'll probably be able to dig something out. Friday, I'm not really anticipating much. Probably will not be any calls on the report for Friday. As usual, we will be in the lab. As usual, charts brought to you by eSignal 11. 
Have a great weekend. Have a great trading week. Thank you.